गुड मॉर्निंग लास्ट टाइम वी हैड ब्रीफली लुकड एट वॉट इज अ सॉनेट कंटिन्यूइंग फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट टूडे वी लुक एट सॉनेट नंबर थर्टी टाइटल्ड वेन टू द सेशंस बाय विलियम शेक्सपियर फर्स्ट द कॉन्टेक्स्ट Sonnet thirty is among the first group of sonnets. That is from the sonnet number one to sonnet one hundred and twenty-six, which are thought to concern a fair young man. The young man, as mentioned in some of Shakespeare's other sonnets, is described as being a good-looking young man who is gentle and seems to possess a never-ending supply of virtues. some view shakespeare's relationship with the young man as a homosexual one although that's debatable however it is also possible that shakespeare's sonnets regarding the fair young man are simply meant to display male friendship above that of romantic love between a man and a woman the original volume of 1609 is dedicated by the publisher to a mr wh who some identify with the fair young man some candidates for mr wh are william shakespeare william hammond william uton henry walker william hughes william herbert william hathaway and with initials reversed henry rithosle whatever the case may be let us now look at the poem itself the introduction sonnet 30 is one of the 154 sonnets written by the english poet and playwright william shakespeare it was published in the quarto in 1609 It is also part of the fair youth portion of the Shakespeare sonnet collection where he writes about his affection for an unknown young man. While it is not known exactly when sonnet 30 was written, most scholars agree that it was written between 1595 and 1600. It is written in Shakespearean form. comprising 14 lines of iambic pentameter divided into three quatrains and a couplet within the sonnet the narrator spends time remembering and reflecting on sad memories of a dear friend he grieves of his shortcomings and failures while also remembering happier memories the narrator uses legal metaphors throughout the sonnet to describe the sadness that he sadness that he feels as he reflects on his life then in the final couplet the narrator changes his tone about the failures as if the losses are now merely gains for himself Sonnet 30 was written by the English poet and playwright William Shakespeare first published in 1609 as part of a sequence of 150 sonnets Sonnet 30 was most likely written in the early 1590s At this time Shakespeare was a young playwright recently arrived in London Despite its author's youth and inexperience the poem broods on life's disappointments for the speaker of the poem even thinking about sorrows brings them back with all their original pain and power only one thing offers solace and comfort in the face of such pain and that is the love the speaker feels for a dear friend
Sonnet 30 was written by Shakespeare. Now a look at the paraphrase. When I'm silently reflecting on things that have happened in the past, I feel disappointed that I failed to get the things I wanted. Old sorrows feel new again and I complain about how I wasted my precious time. Then I can weep heavily, even though I rarely cry for dear friends who have died. I can weep again for lost loves I had once gotten over. I can complain about things that have been destroyed. Then I get, get angry about old insults and I complain about one bad thing after another. A sad tale of things I have already complained about, which feel as painful now as they did before. But if I stop and think about you, my dear friend, everything I have lost returns to me and all my sorrows end. This, students, is the paraphrase of the poem. The poem is uh, written in the first person. Now we'll look at the summary. Sonnet 30 starts with Shakespeare mulling over his past failings and sufferings, including his dead friends and that he feels that he hasn't done anything useful. But in the final couplet, Shakespeare comments on how thinking about his friend helps him to recover all of the things that he had lost and it allows him to stop mourning over all that has happened in the past. That's so much of spilt milk in any case. The poet repeats Sonnet 29's theme that memories of the youth are priceless compensations, not only for many disappointments and unrealized hopes, but for the loss of earlier friends. But if the while, says the poet, I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. These are the last two lines of the poem. Stylistically, Sonnet 30 identically mirrors the preceding sonnet's poetic form. This sonnet is one of the most exquisitely crafted in the entire sequence dealing with the poet's depression over the youth's separation. That is from sonnets 26 to 32. It includes an extraordinary complexity of sound patterns including the effective use of alliteration that is repetitive consonant sounds in a series of words for example both the s and t sounds in sessions of sweet silent thought but alliteration is only one method the poet poets use to enhance the melody of their work Rhyme, of course, is another device for doing this. A third is assonance, similar vowel sounds in accented syllables. For example, the short E sound in the phrases when to the sessions and remembrance. In this case, the short E sound helps unify the sonnet for the assonant sound both begins when and concludes end the sonnet. Contributing to the distinctive rhythm of sonnet 30, 30's lines is the variation of accents in the normally iambic pentameter lines. For example, line 7 has no obvious alternation of short and long syllables equal stress is placed on 
weep afresh long loves long with only slightly less stress on since which follows this phrase likewise in line 6 friends hid and death's dateless night are equally stressed this sonnet typifies why the shakespeare of the sonnets is held to be without rival i'm sorry this sonnet typifies why shakespeare is held to be without rival uh, an achiever of sonnets in achieving rhythm melody and sound within the limited sonnet structure that's all for today thank you